Father God, we thank you so much, so much, God, to you, that you send your begotten Son for only one reason, that way we have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And sometimes we wonder and maybe have a lot of questions to you. Why is this happens to my life? Or what happens to my family, my kids, my children, my, my siblings? But when we see the whole thing, whole universe, when you create it, you're the one who knows every single hair in our heads. God, now we just open your hearts and ask you to be with us. Touch our hearts through sermons that prepare today, through music. That way we absorb your word and we, we come up with a new creature in your words. We got we ask you to be with us in this whole service. Open your hearts and change that we can be in your real witness of your Christ. Thank you so much, Jesus. Amen.
Yeah, it's a privilege to say a few words about testimony. That's what Anatoly asked me uh, about 10 days ago. Could you please come over and share about testimony, how we can testify, how we can share the gospel? And uh, knowing that we are going through the Acts, I found that chapter 22 of the book of Acts is a wonderful example. So I do have a PowerPoint. I hope it will work well for us. And if you could just demonstrate that it really goes in the right direction and we will start with the, some ideas what testimony is. And testimony is experience of God that can unlock somebody else's prison. That's my message for you. Testimony is the experience of God that can unlock somebody else's prison. Um, I would like us to think what we are going through this earth. When we are living, we all experience different feelings. We have different responses on the things that we are going through, isn't it? And sometimes we are forgetting that we have heaven and focus on heaven as we are experiencing our life here, helping us to go through our life. And that's the idea I would like us to get because testimony is something that we will start to speak about right now here today and we'll go and continue to do it through the heaven. But for the sake of our uh, communication and for the sake of our uh, just understanding, I would like to define, just give a little experience uh, explanation what a testimony is. And testimony is the uh, words that we speak about great things that God has done. Could you please put it on the 
PowerPoint, click next. Uh -huh. So a short definition for our purposes, as we are Christian, as we are gonna go soon and share testimony, that uh, testimony is this short test, uh, uh, it's communication that we are doing through our acts, through our words, about great thing that God has done. He has done to us, he has done to our parents, he has done back there in the scripture times, and we are going with that. What is really important, as we survive in here, this earth, earthly experience, I would like us to concentrate and focus our thoughts on something that we are starting here today, and it's the testimony. It's the sharing the truth about our God that is all powerful. We start in it here now, and we will continue talk about that through entire uh, uh, time in heaven. So as we are sharing our testimony here on earth, we start do something that we will continue do in eternity. And I would like us to capture this idea. I don't know what you think about eternity. When I was about 11, 12 years old, I got my first Bible. It was uh, shipped from Germany to me. I was really excited to read all the way through. And then I came to the Revelation. And when I read what we are going to do in heaven, I was not very excited, honestly. When I saw those 24 poor uh, men bow down in, and then those a little bit different weird creatures to me, it was different explanation who, what it is. And then um, they were there, and then us as a multitude of people that are saved, worshiping God and worshiping the Lamb. I had a little bit different experience. I draw in my mind a picture that I was not excited later on. As I became older, I understood that it has nothing to do with what we are going to experience in heaven. See, it, a revelation is just one sh shot. It's a picture that was given to us uh, through entire 2,000 years, picture of the parade, of celebration that is going to be there in heaven. And it's a wonderful picture. For those who read back in 2,000 years ago, this message, it was excited opportunity to be part of the huge event, like on the arena. When we are celebrating our king, then we are celebrating his victory that happened through our life, that happened in our life, and we added to this victory with our each day fighting and celebrating God's presence, getting power from him, editing in glorifying him. So that's what we are gonna do. We are gonna talk a little bit about testimony. And we have a wonderful example of the testimony that we read in Acts chapter two. Would you, would you please uh, go with me and read uh, chapter two, uh, 22 Acts. Brethren and fathers, Here's my defense before you, starts Paul. If you could find, it's a new uh, King James Version I'm reading. And when they heard that he spoke them in Hebrew language, they kept all more silent. And uh, just forgive me my accent, but I hope it will help you to understand what they were experiencing when he was talking in Hebrew. And still, um, enough for Jog, let's we'll go move on. Then he said, I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city, in the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strengthness of fa uh, Father's law, and was zealous toward God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, bringing and delivering into prison both men and women. And as also the high priest bears witness to me, and the all council of the elders from whom I also received the letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring the uh, in chains even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Now, 
It happened as I journeyed and came to Damascus at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why you are persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, from whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me, indeed, they saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all the things which are appointed for you to do. And since I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Then a certain Ananias and devoted man, according to the law, uh, having a good testimony with all the Jews dwelt there, came to me and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at the same hour, I looked up at him. Then he said, God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be his witness to all the men of what you have seen and heard. And now, while you are waiting, arise and be baptized and wash your uh, way your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and I was praying in the temple that I was uh, in the trance and saw him saying to me, make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who were believing in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by counseling to the death and uh, uh, guiding and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. And then he said to me, depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And at that time, they listened to him until this word, and then they raised their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and torn off their clothes and threw dust into the air, the commandment ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under the scorning so that he might know why they shout against him. That's the story that was given to us from this scripture. That's the story of our brother, Paul. And that's the story that gives us idea how to share our testimony. We found that there are at least three parts. And I would like next uh, passage. Yeah, there are three parts in every testimony. Whatever you're speaking in home or on the street, there are three parts. One part is who we were before Jesus met us. And it's just two, passage, uh, two uh, verses, three through five. Actually, three verses, but still, it's a short part of that. Second, it's the what happened then. How did the conversion happen? What was going on? What feelings? What hurts? What really happened around us? What witnesses we have? And third part, how uh, has been changed our life since then? And what God has now for us to do, what purpose for our life is. And as we teach those people who are going through the baptismal classes, we are asking them to prepare a short testimony. And uh, write it down. And then we are asking to read them, memorize them. And we are asking even more 
longer and shorter version. See, Paul had about 27 verses to say, and it reads about four, four and a half minutes as he was interrupted and he had no opportunity anymore to say a word because of the crowd was against him. I don't know how many minutes you will be given to share about great things that God has done to you. So we need to be prepared. And um, would you please go to the next slide? Um, there, uh, really, we have uh, uh, worked on putting uh, the, uh, this testimony together. Here's my question. If you have done it in your life, if you choose time to do that or not, I would like to encourage us to do that. Find a time, because it's a good spiritual exercise for us to, set, to really um, uh, think what happened to us, to put it together, and uh, when uh, this story of God that was given to us in our experience, we will put it in the paper, suddenly it could be good exercise to talk of not just for us, but even for those who are listening to us. Yeah. And it might be helpful to read in our, to, our, to ourselves in the time of need and get in, is encouragement and get some reassurance from those stories. So what I'm asking you, in your spare time, take time and exercise. Think what you can put there. It will be a very special gift to you. And more than that, it's not just for you, it will be for those who are listening. As we grow older, you may need to read those words to your children or even grandchildren as we, we are growing older. Yes, we can do that and pass on this legacy, spiritual gift that was given to us from our ancestors as we are passing on. So there's a one passage uh, as we are talking about great things that God has done. It's not just having the experience that we are starting experience here now and we will talk about in heaven, but it also the commandment from the Lord. And uh, scripture tells us to uh, really in Psalm 78, for we do not keep them, those great things that God has done to us, to our children. We recount them to the next generation, prize worthy deeds of the Lord at his strength and the wonders that he performed. So it's a great thing that we need get time to exercise and put together. Now, as we go in further, I would like next uh, uh, slide. There are things that we should not do, of course. There are things that we should do and things that we should not do. First, I would like, please click it next. Uh, be respectful, and that's our mindset. Really, when we are going to share the gospel, we understand that it's a very special story that was given to you, and it's a very special and sacred moment of your life that you are giving away. And God was acting in your life, and you are capturing it in the words, so wisely choose your words. Be wise what you're gonna say. Please, next line. Yeah. We must be careful uh, not to lie or to exaggerate. And it happens to us. Second one, we must be careful and uh, do not brag and glorify ourselves. Sometimes it happens when you hear the testimony and it's a temptation to all of us. We knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, but we can add something else. Not God's, but our own. Just be careful about that. Little, uh, limit the use of your personal pronoun, I, as you're sharing your testimony. And use uh, of passive word, uh, passive voice is really good to stress the God's role. When I'm talking about use of passive voice, it means better use uh, beginning uh, your testimony with I was able to share, or God gave me this opportunity, I was granted this privilege. Instead of I was, I did, I achieved, I was able to accomplish. 
So uh, that's a little one. And the last line, please. We are not using it as an opportunity to talk about ourselves. It's about God. It's true. Please, next slide. And why is it? Because it's not our story. Since we trusted our Lord, it became our, his story. And that's why probably we are starting the uh, sequence of events and uh, the uh, stories of those leaders in past. And we call this subject in school and science history. Yeah, of course, it's a his story. And we are part of this story that is written down by his hand through our life. Please, next line. Yeah. It takes some re uh, uh, rearrangements of thinking and spiritual uh, effort and uh, discipline to skillfully present your story so that it will be the key that is able to unlock somebody else's prison. And we don't know whose prison it might be. It could be those who are listening to us now here or will listen to you after you will hear your testimony or after they will hear what God has done in your life. We don't know. Please, next slide. Yeah. May our story about the gospel that changes everything will be next line. Someone said, God can turn mess into message and test into testimony and trial into a triumph and victim into victory. It's a well-known catchphrase. As you're reading on the uh, social media, you probably will, will find that. And it's true that people who are around us, who will hear and uh, listen our testimony, they are in despair. They are in a mess. They are those who are going through the test to the very end of their patience and their ability to carry on. Yeah, trials are so difficult. They feel victims. But God is able. Gospel is changing everything. And that's the message for us to share the testimony. As we're saying about the great thing that God has done to us. Please, next slide. So when we are sharing our testimony, we communicate to others that Jesus is risen. He is alive. And we met him. You and I saw him. And he saved us. That's the message of our testimony. He was not just back then, 2,000 years ago, risen from the dead, but he is here with us. And I met him this morning when I was in despair, when I needed him so badly, there maybe in the garden as those ladies that saw him as he risen up. He met us on our way to Damascus as we were about to do our things, do what we wanted, our ways. He stopped us with his very shiny light and showed us the way. He showed us where we are what we have done to ourselves and to our Creator. He gave us a sense of direction. He gives us a new purpose of life. In His light, we see differently. We see things as God sees that. And that's a beautiful part of our testimony as well. He continues to live, to act in us and through us. Please, stress it. As you present your testimony, your story, may they will not just hear, but they will see that God is alive. And your actions are showing that. Please, next slide. And he brings us uh, the awareness of God's presence and God's guidance. Even the whole world will say that I'm wrong. My beliefs are not the appropriate for, the, for them. Even though everybody will say, that I'm not saved because God is with me and I saw him talking to me. He was talking to me through the words of the encouragement of my friend yesterday. He talked to me through the uh, stranger that I met just a few days ago. He talked to me and encouraged me, empowered me when my father and mother blessed me on my way 
from house. Yeah, I experience it. He is with me. And seal of the Holy Spirit is testifying that God is not dead. He is risen. Jesus is risen in his acting in my life. That's the guidance we have from the Lord. Please, next slide. Share your testimony. I would like you understand that it's not an option. Testimony, it's not something that belongs just to you to enjoy in your spare time to read it over. No, it's too difficult for you to carry. It's too burdened. It's too hard for you to carry in your own mouth. Share it. Share it with those who are around you because it's not your story. Do you remember? It's a God's story in your life. And if it's his story, we need to be very careful to keep it to ourselves. It's more than we are. It's more than I am. It's more than even this church. It belongs to the whole world. And may whole world will listen and hear your testimony as you're sharing from your mouth, as you are walking in God's presence and testifying with each step of your walking with the Lord that Christ is risen. He is alive and his dominion, his power is with us. I th yeah, when people see that we are experiencing God in life, we are communicating his story. And they hear or see our story, the testimony that opens door from the prison to heaven, entering in which someone else is able to experience God. Yes, as we share his story, this story, because it's God's story, it's his word. He is drawing picture through your life, opens door into heaven. And because of you, because your story, people are able to get in the very special moment, presence of God and worship him. Right now, I would like for us to stand up and worship our God in our heart to share how much we love him. We will still have a time as we will go to the uh, luncheon and we will sit down around the tables and talk about stories, how God was powerful, how much he changed, what he has done in our life. We will have it. Be wise and use this time. May God will guide you, lead you. And now, let's will bow down and thank God for his story in our life. When the music fades When the music fades And all is stripped away And I simply come The longing just to bring Something that's a word That will bless your heart much deeper with it through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I about you it's all about you Jesus 